Now that we've learned how to set up our search indexes, we're ready to learn how to start using them with actual search queries. As we know, DSC Core normally returns results from our partition or from scanning all partitions, even though scanning all partitions isn't recommended. We can filter out results using one or more of our clustering columns. We can also filter with non-primary key columns if we enable, one, allow filtering, two, adding Cassandra secondary indexes, or three, adding materialized views. Many of these ways are not recommended due to some very real performance concerns. DSE Search uses search indexes to filter results in a way that has been optimized to not heavily impact performance. Any column that has been indexed can be used in a search query. Using DSE Search, we now have the power to get the results we need by filtering results that are not a part of our partition key or clustering columns. Let's remind ourselves how queries work on DSE Core with a familiar ring architecture. This example shows how we can use a DSE Core query to filter based on partition key. This allows us to narrow down the query to a single replica and a single partition to read. In this case, our data is partitioned around the ring by video ID. Our query would look like select star from killervideo.videos where video ID equals our video ID. This will return us only one value. Since our video ID is unique, only one value will be returned. Let's remind ourselves how a query would work with DSE Core when allow filtering is enabled. Here we have a query that is not using the partition key to filter by. Remember, our partition key is on video ID. Select star from killervideo.videos where release year equals 2018. What does this mean in practice? The query will have to be sent to all nodes in the cluster, or enough nodes to cover the entire token range. Every node will have to go through each and every one of its partitions and rows and read the value for release here to determine if it could be included in the result. Therefore, filtering the rows based on the release year. Once all rows have been found, it will finally be sent back to the coordinator and then finally to the client. Doing a compare on each row in the table across maybe hundreds of nodes is probably not the best idea. Now that we've reminded ourselves of what DSC core queries would look like in this case, let's review how this would work with DSC search using the same query that is looking for movies based on release year. While the query will still need to be sent to all nodes, instead of having to read each and every node, DSC search will use the search index to do a check. This makes it more efficient to do with the filtering taking place at the index level and not the query level. Only rows that match the requested parameters will be read eventually and returned. Now that we understand why we should use DSC search indexes, how can we use them with CQL? This table shows all the CQL keywords supporting search, equality, inequality, range, match multiple values, like, exists, count, limit rows, and sort. We will discuss a few of these terms in more detail here in just a bit. But first, let's review some examples. Take a second to review each one of these examples. These will give you a firm grasp on how to use each of these different column data types and the predicates. Feel free to pause the video here and walk through these. I'll be here when you get back. Oh good, you're back. Since you're now an expert on CQL search keywords, let's look at date and timestamp. Date values can be queried using a string formatted as year, month, day. Timestamps are queried using a string literal or a Unix timestamp integer. Remember, Unix time is approximately the number of seconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. For timestamps, any precision beyond millisecond is not captured in the search index, so you can only effectively query to millisecond precision. Okay, like is like great. Right? Actually, like is very useful. It adds the ability to search via simple regular expressions in CQL. It works only on string data types, ASCII, text, and varchar. You can use a percentage sign as the wildcard at the beginning, end of a string, or even both. It is case sensitive by default, but can ultimately change based on your schema. In the first example shown here, we are looking for movie titles that start with Terminator. So hopefully, we'll find the movies Terminator 1 all the way through Terminator 6. In the second example, we're looking for titles that end with Jedi. So we should be able to find The Last Jedi, get the joke, 
and The Return of the Jedi. In the last example, we're looking for titles that contain the word legend. We should be able to find Legends of the Fall, as well as I Am Legend, and Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. There are some limitations with CQL search using like, so be aware of these. Wildcards do not work if they're not at the beginning or the end of the string. No error will be thrown, but just nothing will be returned as a result. By putting at the end or the beginning of your string, you may end up with more results than you wanted, but you will get the result. More filtering will just need to be applied. The wildcard symbol, the percentage sign, cannot itself be escaped. If your string contains a percentage sign, you won't be able to find it with this method. Also, it should be noted that there is no single character wildcards available. Multiple conditions can be added to your queries. The keyword AND can define multiple predicates that must all match to be included in your result. Remember that while AND is available for CQL queries, OR is not available when using CQL, and not when using CQL and search. To use OR, you can utilize an alternative query syntax in CQL, or utilize in as it is similar to an or if you only need to query a single column. With or, luckily, you can just run two separate queries and with DSC's outstanding performance, you will have the results quickly. Here is an example of utilizing and to find a particular movie. Select star from videos where title equals Titanic and release year equals 1997. Since I know there are many versions of Titanic, I want the one that I know I watched over five times in theater as a preteen. No judging. Search allows for order by on any index column, not just clustering columns. This adds the power of sorting to all our indexed columns. Be aware that collections, user-defined types, and tuples do not have order by support. Even partition key columns that do not have order by support in standard CQL now can be sorted with DSC search. In DSC core, select count star can cause all kinds of issues. Select count star will return the number of rows in the query, but without the data itself. That alone is not the issue. The issue is that this results in a full table scan. And even adding a WHERE clause will still need to scan all the rows in the partition where each row must be compared and then added to the count if it meets the condition. This can be extremely slow and potentially cause performance issues, or just time out without generating any kind of answer. With DSC Search, this operation will utilize the power of search indexes to quickly return this answer. Now it's time to put our thinking caps on and work on this pop quiz. Which of these queries is using DSC Core versus DSC Search? Remember, the video table has a primary key of video ID. Okay, pause the video now and take a look at these. Okay, great, you're back and ready with your answers. Let's review. The first and third query, as you can see, are using search because they are searching on column titles, rating, and release here. None of those are our partition key, video ID. The second query will execute with just DSC core because it is only querying the partition key. Remember, the other queries wouldn't be able to run in DSC core and will return a warning to use the allow filtering keyword, ink. Also, a note to remember here even though there is a search index on the video ID column, because we are able to search with DSC core on this column, we will. The logic states, if able to search via DSC core, then do that. If not, try DSC search. Let's go back and review some very important points around Cassandra, DSC core, and search. To be able to use search, I need to, one, have DSC search workload enabled, and two, an index created for the table being queried, more specifically on the columns that I am trying to query. DSC will determine if the CQL query can be fulfilled without using search at all. If so, then it will run without search. Otherwise, use search instead. Search will also have a priority in situations where a secondary index is normally used. Be aware, you can also force CQL to run a query with search using a different query syntax that will be discussed in the term search unit. This flowchart helps us walk through the logic of DSC core versus a DSC search query and which one to choose. The first branching point asks, if search workload enabled, we know that if it is not, then we'll be using a Cassandra query. If it is enabled, we come to the next branching point that asks if we have a search index created. If we don't, we're back to a normal Cassandra query. 
If we do have a search index enabled, then travel to the next branching point. This asks if all the columns queried are all the columns in the partition key. If yes, and no other columns are added, then a regular Cassandra query will be executed. If not all the partition key columns are included, or there are regular columns being queried, then we will use a search query. Phew, I think talking about it was much more complicated than just studying this easy to understand chart. Feel free to pause the video and take a look. If you want to verify the path your query is taking, turn tracing on before running your query. It's as simple as adding tracing on before running your query. It should be noted here, there will be a lot of information when tracing is enabled, but you can tell if search was used if you see the message about a response from the solar URL. If you don't happen to see this message, then the query was ran as a standard CQL query. Remember, with search queries, only two different consistencies levels are supported, one and local one. If you try to use any other consistency level, CQL will return an error. There are some other CQL functionality that is not compatible with search indexes. Counters, these need to be excluded when indexing. Static columns, these are automatically ignored. Select distinct, this must be restricted to the partition key or to a static column. We cannot execute a CQL search query with the syntax we've been discussing in this unit and also the solar query column. Remember, when querying with the above incompatible types that do not work with search, it is still possible to do these queries with allow filtering, but always make sure you understand the risks and consequences of doing so. All right, it's finally time for another hands-on exercise. This exercise focuses on running and practicing search queries. Again, it will utilize the awesome DataStack Studio notebooks. You will determine if you're running a DSC core or a DSC search query. You'll run search queries using different predicates and try other CQL clauses that will work with search. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next lesson.